The Alexander Ramsey House is probably the best preserved Victorian era home in America. Located just west of downtown at 265 South Exchange Street, it was inhabited by the Ramsey family until the death of Anita Furness, Ramsey's granddaughter, in 1964. In her will, she gave the property, family letters and photographs, and over 14,000 original furnishings to the Minnesota Historical Society. The Society maintains the home as a historic house museum. The inspiration to build the house came to Ramsey in 1866. While serving in the Senate in Washington, D.C., he was impressed by the fine homes there. He decided to build his own mansion and chose a site in St. Paul's upscale Irvine Park neighborhood. Construction lasted from 1868 to 1872 and included all the newest conveniences, like hot and cold running water, gas lighting, and hot water radiators. Ramsey's wife, Anna, furnished the house with goods from a New York department store, nearly two boxcars full. The entryway of the house and the adjacent rooms boast 14-foot ceilings. Rooms toward the back of the house, the more private area, are a more modest 12 feet in height. A hat stand in the front hallway was also a place for guests to leave their calling cards. Many guests came to the house for social events. In 1875, the wedding of the Ramsey's daughter, Marion, was held in the parlor. In the dining room, the family hosted many fine meals. Guests were attended to by servants who would receive the food from the kitchen by a pass-through screen. It took many hands to run this large house, and several of the servants lived on the third floor. They were on call 24 hours a day and could be summoned by bell pulls, which were braided cords that hung from the walls in many of the rooms and were attached to an elaborate network of cables and pulleys. Pulling a cord would ring a bell and flip a number on a tally board for the servants to see. Each number indicated a different room. Ramsey kept detailed records of his expenditures. For instance, he paid $26 for the modern convenience of an ice box. We also learned that although the home had indoor plumbing, bathing was not necessarily a daily ritual. In his later years, Ramsey noted that he paid his manservant to help him in and out of the tub once per month. While much of life in those times would seem strange to us, some things have not changed entirely. Like a kid's room today, the granddaughter's bedchamber is adorned with school banners and photos of the popular entertainers of the day. The playroom has dolls, books, and games. There's even a dollhouse replica of the mansion. Besides his political career, Ramsey was also a savvy businessman and real estate investor. The home is filled with evidence of his success in both careers. For solitude, Ramsey could often be found by a large third floor window overlooking Irvine Park, a place off limits to the servants. Mrs. Ramsey would spend time in the snuggery, a room for sewing and other crafts of the time. Tour guides lead you through each of the rooms. The house is maintained to look just as it did when it was lived in. Come visit the Alexander Ramsey House and get a taste of the high life in St. Paul in the early days.